What's your YouTube? Dan here from Zephyr Games, bringing you my first place True Draco Demise deck. Now, yes, um, I took this to my locals this weekend and got first place with it. Uh, did very, very well. I'd kind of put the deck together previously and I've kind of updated it with the update in meta. Now, there's a couple of cards in here that, like, my God, did they win me so many games. They were so good. Um, so I'll take you through the main deck and then I'll take you through the side deck as well. So we play double Masterpiece. You can play triple if you want, but two, just for me, kind of seem more than enough today. Uh, double Majesty Maiden. Now, with the Majesty Maiden, I have, I'm not 100% set on her yet at two because I play two of her and one Darius. Now, Darius is very, very interesting in the sense that when it leaves the field, um, if it's been properly normal summoned, you special summon one from your deck. Now, there's two sides to this. The issue is we only get to play one more Ignis Heat. So our targets are very, very slim as they are. Um, but in that census, um, Darius can kind of help give you another monster on board to help push you forward that might actually end up winning you the game the next turn. Like There was an example with Darius today that I used his effect, brought out a masterpiece in defense because it was the only one left in my deck um, as a monster. I was then able to switch Masterpiece into attack and, and swing the game after getting rid of um, my opponent's monster. So it's not it's not set in stone, but it actually did do a bit of work today, which is quite helpful. But the MVP of the monsters is this guy here, Amato, uh, Amano Iwata, or Iwato. So good. Like, it's so good. The amount of times that my opponent, I would go... Um, like I could obviously normal summon this first, but there was one time where I forgot to normal summon it. I, I activated... Um, terraforming, searched out my diagram and then went, oh crap, normal summoned uh, Amino, Amino and my opponent was like yeah, like you could just tell that he had an ash in hand, it turned out the next turn he had to set that ash and uh, beat over that and one, one push free for game on that one, so good, so so good, so cannot be special summoned, monsters cannot activate their effects except spirit monsters once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal summoned or flip face up, return it to the hand so you normal summon this so your opponent can't ash any of your draw cards, so you've got like your terraformings you've got your demises, you've got your dualities you've got your um, disciples your heritage, your desire, uh, desires the majority of your star, majority of your spells is draw power and they couldn't deal with this, and with being a 1900 bit it was really cool, uh, and then obviously most of your Draco stuff goes off during your opponent's turn, so you would bounce an uh, Animo at the end phase, obviously getting around Card of Demise as well, uh, leaving you with a monster in hand should you need it, uh, and then it means that your Majesty and your Ignis could then start going off from there as well, which is very, very helpful. So that's it for the monster lineup, very, very small. Um, no hand traps, they're all in the extra deck because we play Demise. We play Triple Diagram and Triple Terraforming, most important card in the deck. Um, there was one game where I, I opened up Free ter uh, free diagram. So all my uh, I think it's like two diagram and a terraforming. So the rest of my two terraformings in debt were dead. Um, but obviously it quite it worked out quite nicely because I could then get rid of them with diagram. Triple card of demise. Um, I got ashed on this once successfully, uh, and that kind of sucked. But um, because he ashed this, I then had to result to my desires, and then I was able to push on from there. And my desires draw was awesome. Uh, and went in for game. But that's where Am uh, Amino works out really, really well. It means that these can go off without a hitch. Uh, same with Duality as well. So you play Triple Duality. Because apart from Darius, you don't special summon. And even then, Darius is probably going to special summon during your opponent's turn. Uh, triple Heritage and Triple Disciples. Um, not much more needs to be said about these. These guys win you games as well. Because it lets you reshuffle your um, already scarce monster resource. Uh, and of course, your trap cards as well that you really, really need. Uh, popping back row, dealing with stuff like that is very, very helpful. Double Pot of Desires. Uh, again, this probably won me a game as well. It is a bit risky with such a low monster count that you could banish all your, all your monsters. And if that happens, you probably just scoop and go, cool, game, go on to the next one. Um, but this actually won me a game today because I was I either had a whole hand of spells uh, or, or spells and traps and then activated this and banished all the other continuous spells and traps that I didn't need, get into the monsters and go from there. Um, so it kind of worked out in my in my favour today. The one Regeki, the one Monster Reborn, and the one Monarch Stormforth. Stormforth um, didn't. Re I only saw this once today, um, but when I did see it, it, it kind of dealt with the it dealt with the Dinos armor, conductor Tyranno, uh, and let me special summon out. It comes off Rudrid now. The Monster Reborn is interesting as well in the sense that again it it clashes with Pot of Duality and Card of Demise, but 
Moss Reborn could be a very, very nice top deck that wins you the game because you could have like a masterpiece in hand with one continuous but no monsters on board. Um, so if you top deck the Monster Reborn, activate a Monster Reborn, bring back um, a monster in your graveyard or even your opponent's graveyard, um, and then tribute off to get a masterpiece on board could be very, very helpful. You don't have to play it, it is a 42 card deck, so that is one that I would say you could take out if you wish. Uh, triple True Draco Apocalypse, and now onto the second MVP of the deck, and that is the Monarchs Erupt. So, so good. Like, it's a skill drain, but your other monsters don't get affected, and you don't have to pay a thousand. So you activate this card only if you have no cards in your extra deck, which we don't play any. And control attribute summon monster. Negate the effects of all face up monsters on the field except tribute summon monsters. During your end phase, if you control no tribute summon monsters, send this card to the graveyard. So I actually won a game today because I went. I had one, um, like Ignis on board. I activated Erupt. Um, he went to pot, uh, destroy my Ignis. I chained Erupt. So I negged all, all his card effects. He killed my Ignis. This then stayed on the board, went through his turn, and then went back through my turn. And he thought this got destroyed during the end phase in general. But it didn't. So because this got to stay, I then had the ability to tribute off one of my continuous spells for another monster. Um, and leaving, keeping this on board in, in play and then pushed him for game. Like, it's so good. Like, I, I can't believe that we never played this before. Um, this most recent change. It's just such a good card. We'll then play the one return because we can only play one. Um, you can bump Mon Monarchs Erupt up or play a skill drain if you wish. Um, two is kind of enough. Three can be a bit cloggy, but it is still very, very good and powerful card. Uh, and then we play the Solemn Brigade of two strikes, one judgment, and one warning. Um, you can play the third strike if you want. I just wanted to keep it to a, a 42 card deck and, and didn't really want to go too much higher. I know the one card doesn't make a difference. But again, the extra two cards actually helped me win a game today because I was able to resolve two Pot of Desires, left myself with um, a little bit left in deck and was able to push through and win the game. So now onto the side deck. Um, this is a bit of an odd one as well. Not many people agree with this, but Triple Ash, um, Triple Vela, and Double Ogre. Now, from the monsters, only Ash went in today. Like I put in Ash free to uh, like pretty much all of my games today. Um, the exact same with the traps as well, because we play triple evenly matched. Because this is a going second kind of trap, which works really, really nicely. It clears your opponent's boards. Um, so basically, most of my matches were evenly matched going in, and um, Ash blossoms. The only other cards that I put in at certain times was Anti Spell uh, and Imperial Order, but I never saw Imperial Order. I only saw Anti Spell once when I put it in. So what makes this so, so good is the fact that what you want to do is you need to be able to read the game. And it, you know if your opponent's going to make you go second, I tend to take out, I'll quickly show you what I tend to take out. Um, I tend to kind of drop the Solemn Brigade down at least one. So, so for example, I'll show you what I was putting in most of the time. I was putting in three Ashes and three Evening Matches if I was if I knew my opponent was going to make me go second. Um, so I would put in three evenly matches because you can get rid of them with Diagram if they become dead. The Ashes can become an extra monster on the board should you need it. So I was getting rid of the one strike sometimes. Um, obviously these aren't all set in stone. You can change around with these a little bit as well. And you've got to be very careful with the ratios. But the majority was one Ash, uh, sorry, one strike, one Disciples, one Duality, one Demise, one Terraforming, and one Amino Iwato. Sometimes I took Darius out instead, um, depending on what I thought my opponent was going to have, um, and would play, kind of play it around. So this could be Darius if you wanted to. Now, I'll explain the reason. These aren't perfect. I'm not saying that this is what you should always take out, but I'll explain the reason behind it. Strike, because I'm going second, you know, I don't want to have loads of cards that I need to set that aren't going to benefit me in the ability to tribute summon, which is why Strike came out. Uh, Disciples, it's searchable. The fact that I could play the deck with two, like if I'm going first, I want all three of them in there because I'm going to burn through my resources with demises and stuff like that. When I'm going second, I don't need to have that many in there. So again, it kind of works the same with demise. Demise, ideally, I only want to see when I'm going first, but it can also help me out going second as well. If you do it right, you can do the damage, clear your opponent's board, then activate demise, uh, and demise can push you forward. Terraforming uh, and Amino came out because. Amino, I was like, well, if I'm not going first, I don't need to protect myself as much. Now, yes, all right, that sounds a little bit silly, but hear me out. The idea is um, my two Amino Awatos would, 
kind of seen when they needed to be seen. Um, but once you've used them, they then become kind of dead. So it was one of the ones I was like, of all the cards in my deck to kind of sacrifice, it'd either be this or Darius. So if I thought my opponent was going to be putting in loads of hand traps, and if they were going first, um, depending on how what deck I was playing against and how heavily combo-based their deck was, um, I would then read it and say, right, well, they're probably not going to put loads of hand traps in because they want to go first, they want to put more back row and stuff like that. So I'd put Amorato in. If I thought, oh, they can, they can have a nice board and still have hand traps playable, I would leave this in and take out Darius. Uh, and then the Terraforming came out just purely because, uh, like I said, sometimes Terraforming can actually become dead. Yes, I want to see my dra dra uh, diagram as early as I possibly can, but when I was comparing it with this, sometimes if I was like, I need to keep that in, I'd probably drop the evening match down one or I'd mix around with the ratios here. But these were the main cards that went in. They were the main cards that came out, basically. Um, it's still an incredibly powerful deck, take nothing away from it. The biggest downside is it can brick really, really bad. Like I had one game, luckily, one game that was brutal brick. Like I'm not even joking, this was, um, I think I ended up, no, I, I lost that one. It was against a 6 Sam True King, um, because, the, um, so I was going, going second, I put in an Ash Blossom, I Ash Blossomed um, his Terraforming, he then got um, Smoke Signal, searched out and, and started doing some plays there. He ended the board with a True King of Agamazood and a Xien. Now, obviously, Xien started turning off all my spells and traps, uh, and I started to draw into more spells and traps. I couldn't, I didn't have the ability to, to get into a monster, uh, and that's kind of where I, I got killed with the brick. Regardless, it is still incredibly powerful. Masterpiece is still a massive, massive thing to deal with um, and take nothing away from the amount of back row you play. Like strikes and judgments, because you've got enough draw power to get you into them, are still incredibly powerful and very, very, very disruptive. But I hope this helps. I hope this gives you a couple of ideas on your one. Um, it's certainly a underdog meta contender, in my opinion. Um, it, it's just dealing with the pendulum matchup in a way, like the Pendulum matchup can always be an issue, it just depends on who goes off first. But, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time guys, as always, happy dueling. Also YouTube, thanks for watching that video, I hope you liked it, if you did, hit that like button, and of course don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button in the bottom left hand corner, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. We've got more deck profiles, duels, pack openings, and many more Yu-Gi-Oh videos coming up for you all year round, so don't forget to stay tuned for all of that. Thanks, and as always guys, happy dueling.